Okay, my video today is looking at one of my, I guess, one of my more favourite of <clears throat> time periods, which is the golden age of pulp fiction, or um, the period of pre-World War II, I think, so the 1930s, 19, early 1940s, so... We have, let me try and get a bit of light here going. Oh, here we go. So we've got the, for me, we've got the gangsters. So these are, um, these were, I think they're Blue Moon. And I like them in particular because they gave you a box of citizens and, uh, which I was really happy with because uh, if you have a look at my one of my blogs, uh, I've uh, Pulp Adventures. I can't remember what it is, but if you go have a search, if I'm organised enough, I might try and put a link in. But I did a number of narrative adventures of um, Yeah, no, I'm sorry, I'm just not with it at the moment. So, uh, but yeah, a, lot, a number of narrative adventures. These played, the citizens played the objective markets. And as you can see, I'm, you know, they're average painted, but, you know, from three feet away, they look good. Uh, even up close with this camera, they don't look too bad. And uh, there's 20 of them, which is more than enough to work with. Then there's the gangsters, and in amongst them there's some moles, there's uh, some GR, uh, government agents, some G-men, I think, police at the back. Then I move into my more esoteric sort of um, uh, pulp figures. Um, Bob Merch, I think. I, can't, I honestly can't remember the name now, but they're the aliens. Uh, with uh, their ray guns and that, so I had them on strange bases. Then my Strossen Truppen, I think, my Zeppelin chaps. So uh, my chap with the red skull and uh, and that, so they were good. Cultists, some squid, squidly type cultist dudes, which uh, you know, I was quite pleased with. So they're in purple, and then I've got another mob of cultists. Also, this this mob are a little more organised with a flamethrower and a heavy machine gun, so uh, or a light machine gun. So I was quite pleased. Some more policemen with uh, a bit of variety with this pack. They had a uh, obviously a constable leading on a uh, a uh, a drunk. And uh, obviously a madam uh, with a yeah, even a female officer in the back there, rather butch one, and a booking officer. So uh, yeah, then we had we had uh, what have we got in the back here? Then we've got uh, some femme fatales, or you know, I think captives. I think so. Some ladies in distress. I think there was a buzzsaw uh, that went with the one that was uh, lying down. And uh, we have uh, some yetis. Uh, I think I, I had another bucket of yetis. I think I was using them in Blood Bowl. But uh, they are very nice. I quite like them. So as we move across, as you can see, I really like my my robots. So I've got quite a few pulp-ish looking robots and uh, some mad scientists to go with them. <coughs> Pardon me, some, some spacemen, space people. Uh, with, they even had uh, plastic helmets, as you can see, which uh, sadly, time doesn't do the plastic very good, but they're good enough. I like the lass here with the uh, with the uh, 
carnivorous plant in the pot. I thought that was quite nice. And then I've got some adventurers. So they were all from a variety of packets and adventurers. There's one that's obviously supposed to be like an Indiana Jones. A chap with his dog, which I can't quite remember. And then there are my Rocketeers, quite a few, and his Rocket Squad. So I'm really, really pleased with them. So there's quite a few of those. So they are my Pulp Fiction collection, which I thoroughly love, as you can probably tell. But yes. Anyway, thank you for watching and taking the time. Until next time, signing off, the Honourable John.